Do not pause, do not collect 200 rand, do not meme. Guys, <laughs> it's about to get lit. You're watching Training SA on SABC3 and online we're on trainingsa.tv. Now, next up, we have been waiting for this auspicious convivium for many, many moons mm. because our guest has enjoyed a career spanning something like what, 29 years. Mm. Sorry. That's amazing. All right. So 29 years in broadcasting. This is a person who can tell you stories about how things work behind the scenes, as well as what it's like to be one of the most recognizable faces mm. in South Africa. He's been on shows like Selling Matunzi, Speak Out, and Gizaga, um, all on the various SABC channels and, and others. Um, and he's all about connecting with people. So we want to know some of the stories some of the legacy of the legend, Dosto Noche. Kind of an out of body ish experience seeing you in real life, mm. like we used to you. It's we grew up watching mm. you, it's a strange thing. You, you, you're making it sound like I'm an antique. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm curious to know, like, what is the biggest feedback that you get? So, like, you walk the streets, what do people scream out at you? What do they say to you? Wow, you don't change. You still look yeah. the same. Yeah. That's, that's the comment that's I get now and again. Right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Selima Tunzi. Um, and recently you were on a show called Step In, right? But people don't know that you were a school teacher. Right? That's, in the that's my profession. Yes. So, so how did you do school teaching and television? Or you moved from one to another and why? I was at the college. Uh, busy getting myself prepared or skilled to become a teacher. Yes. Mm. When I saw an ad on TV, those years, they were brave enough to put, you know, ads to say, we are auditioning this particular weekend, Which come show through. Which was that? It was Safe Pick a Box. Wow. 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 By then, Lunga Williams was presenting yes. it in Sitkosa, so yes. they needed somebody to come and do it oh in Sitswana. Yes. I love and, they, and they, the rest is history. You know, they said come for auditions. I auditioned for surf picker box, but they said no, man. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We've got bigger plans for you. I'm wow. like, what? They said no. There's a show called Ngom Kibelo. Yes, Ngom Kibelo. And by then it was Bobby Ziggy yes. in Kansas. Mm. And they said watch the show because we want you to join those guys and you 50, know. Fifty. What? Wow. Wow. 150, 200. No, 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 no. Okay. 150 was like your highest. <laughs> 200 was like the. The whole field, the whole field. Yeah, no, you, you've wow. got it. Wow. Yeah. Um, before you joined Selima Tunes, there were already two presenters there, and you asked to join them. Now the question is that why do you think that you were asked to join to join them when there were already people there? And what did you bring? What flair? What did you? What dust or magic did you bring? At, at, at that time, when Selima Tunes was introduced, these two guys came in, mm. and I was now, you know. There, at the back, okay. behind cameras. And two months down the line, baby Joe felt like, you know what, it's, it's not working. The flight's not there. Mm. Those two, just come in for a time being while we look for wow. presenters wow. who would you know, be suitable for the show. Mm. And that was it. That's how I got into the show. Nice. And what, what did you think you brought to the f show? What specifically, what flair? <sighs> The yellow bonus or what else? Look, I, 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 I wouldn't understand what was the hoo-ha all about. Because, you know, I always say, and I always hear people saying, be yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I stepped in into Selima Tunzi, it wasn't about I, I'm trying to compete with who. Mm -hmm. I just went in there 
and yourself. that was myself. Yeah. That was my character. Mm. That's who I am mm. when I'm interacting with people. Yeah. Mm. To let everybody feel at home and be happy. Mm. And you must also be able to express yourself. Mm. Yeah. So, okay. Where does the phrase dugu dugu come from? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, baby Joe. Mm. Mm. He would joke around in the offices. Dugu 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 dugu. And I'm like, what is this dugu dugu? And I said, fuck, let me take it to the show. Yeah. But then when I take it to the show, I have to have a meaning with it, mm. for it. And at the beginning, for people to understand, I used to say dugu dugu, and then I would pump the fist. Yeah. Mm. And when people were asking, I said, no, I'm saying keep on pumping the fun. Mm. And that's how the phrase, you know, got going. Okay. But what pushed it was the Dugu Dugu Awards. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I want to know what Because they... that made the phrase Dugu Dugu big. Mm. It became, ended up becoming part of the Tzotzi language because yeah. they would tell you Dugu Dugu Wafiga yeah. 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 There was a soccer player, Dugu Dugu Makanya. So it, it became big. Uh, unfortunately, it was never patent. Mm. <laughs> Retrospectively, maybe you can do that. So let's talk about other shows that you've done. Please step in. Nikki Zaka, um, very educational, but also very emotional in their own respects. Why do those shows? Or was it one of those opportunities, like you've mentioned, where it was there and you got in? You, you won't believe this. That, that peak, that peak, that peak. Mm. That's me in the office at work. Yes, yeah. yes. All right. Um, I don't have a manager who would say, go for auditions, mm. but I would get calls yes. from producers to mm. say, please come, let's have a discussion. <laughs> we have this kind mm. of a show, mm. and we think it would suit your character because of one, two, three. That's how I got involved into these shows. But it became relevant because now, I'm no longer young. I'm getting what? old. You can see my no. my, my, <laughs> my FNB <laughs> is getting bigger and bigger by the day. So I, I need to do shows that are relevant to my age and that I would find it comfortable for me to communicate to, to the viewers and everybody else mm. sitting around me. And those two shows, I think at the stage where I am, I'm comfortable. I'm talking the language that I think I understand, mm. uh, especially with Kizaka, mm. because we're talking about radical economic transformation and, mm. and that's what we're trying to address within that show mm. around burial societies and mm. stock fields. Mm. So let's talk about the fact that you are now producing and directing okay. uh, your own shows and you're also an advocate for female directors. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I, I was quite happy when I walked in and I saw a lady behind camera three, the Veronica, mm. and I'm like, wow, you know, this is the route. That's the route you need to take. Uh, all along, I've been around crews yeah. where the male dominated. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And the industry has changed so much in this country. Mm. It's unfortunate that when you look at the crews, you still see men. Mm. Mm. And I'm still waiting before I retire to be directed by a woman because the first show that I did, Kamukibela, was directed by Di Rosen. And amazing. ever since, mm. there's been men oh. telling me how high should I jump. And before I disappear, I need, you know, to get a few ladies around me. So is that changing in your view? You, you, you see, but it's slowly, changing, but it's slowly. too slow. Okay. It's too slow. Mm. Yeah. I, I think majority are comfortable to be this side of the cameras mm. yeah. and looking, you know. But the, 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 the challenge is we need... More women Sometimes we're this side of the camera and we don't look that nice. So then so. tell me about um, the fact that you've interviewed so many amazing people from various backgrounds, or who's been the most interesting interview that you'd like to maybe revisit? Brenda Fassi. Yes! Why I'm the second because I've been in Yanni, so I'm closer to the camera. Okay, let me let you answer. Look, Brenda would walk into the studio and she would make it possible for anybody interviewing her to say, you know what, relax. Mm -hmm. I'm a human being just like you. Forget that I'm Brenda Fassi. A small mm. And she, would even, she even went to extend where she held my cheeks and kissed me. And everybody was saying, what, what was the kiss all about? I said, no, that was just a friendly kiss. Oh, Brenda, she was an opportunist. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Brenda was happy that mm. I'm, I'm, we're talking. And it, you know, Selima Tunes, we, we didn't have scripts. Joe would give you two, three questions to say out of your interview, if you can just address these three questions. And mm. that's it. Wrong. Can we just, for anyone who doesn't know, Baby Joe is a man who is a prolific <laughs> um, producer. Yes. And he produces Seli Matunzi mm. and he created these incredible television spectaculars, mm. spectacles. 
What's the word I'm looking for? Spectacular. Oh, Spectacular. Oh, Spectacular. Oh, thank you. Mm. Um, so, so that if anyone doesn't know that this person we're always He's also the mayor to. of Malvo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. No. So, um, Dada Noche, there is obviously a, a big focus on the centenary of Udada Nelson Mandela. And we talk about legacy. Um, we talk about how Madiba touched our lives. How has he touched yours? And, and how do you feel you're leaving a legacy behind? I was fortunate that uh, when Boys to Men were here a few mm. years back when Dada was the president, uh, I picked it back on, on Boys to Men to get to Hatim to meet Dada. Nice. Mm. Uh, I cared less about Boys to Men. You know? Sorry. You go to Hatim, and that particular day when he walked out of the room, he greeted these guys, and when he came to me, he said, Dugu Dugu. Oh! And I'm like, hang on, was he briefed? Oh. Or what? Dwaban. We shook hands. And that's one handshake I will never forget for the rest of my life. And wow. I thought I, I'm tall, but he mm. was slightly taller than me. Mm. The rest is history. The rest is now, history. Now, you look back at the legacy that I wanted to leave us as the country yeah. and to where we are now. It's a shame. Mm. Mm. Just yesterday, we were marching. Mm. And the march it was, it's about us men, mm. Banna Madod. My who are at the moment ransacking the lives of the poor child and women in South Africa. And it's all wrong. Mm. And it's unfortunate that we cannot all be, we could not all be in that particular match. But as men in our little spaces, in our little offices, what is it that we do mm. to make it a point that our women are protected? Mm. Circumstances and situations are, are quite difficult to handle with some of these cases mm. where people are constantly being abused. But, you know, I think that's one point we need to rectify now, just to, to say, to make it possible for us to carry on the bait on that data left. Mm -hmm. To say, you know what, let's take care of this woman. I think you've said everything that needs to be said. Thank you very much for being a role model. Thank you very much for entertaining us. Thank you very much for sharing these stories. This is the legendary Inter the Dostonoche. <laughs>